So I think we're kind of touching upon this, but I have a question of why do you hunt it? I mean, if we can go and sit in the woods and meditate on nature for two hours and draw these deep conclusions, if you could go out as a botanist and study the plants and you know, garner your depth there, if depth is a sort of goal, why, what does hunting add to it? Well, I think people do that. Mm -hmm. They botanists definitely do that. Mm -hmm. um, they're there for a different reason. They're there for um, knowledge and, and understanding and, and perhaps spiritual enlightenment with their relationship with plants. Um, my sister doesn't hunt, but she has. She does like United Plant Savers, mm -hmm. and she has this incredibly deep relationship. And then she's a painter, so she's painting them. Like if you look at these pictures, yeah, um, that's a whole nother like level of depth. But her son, my nephew, is a is a real hunter, and he grew up with me hunting. And um, we are we don't know the plants like my sister does, but we're after we're going to try to kill something. Mm -hmm. And we're following in, like, when I see, like, coyotes and wolves and wolverines, like, they're my tribe. Mm -hmm. Like, like so, I, and, and I, my sister, although she loves animals, she doesn't think of that in that way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm looking at, like, I very seldom see wolves. But, like, when I see wolves, I think of that. I, it's like, this is, we're here, we all live here. And periodically, we take one of those grassy eaters mm -hmm. and someday we'll be the grass we'll be back integrated into this system in our atoms and we'll be dead mm -hmm. but for now our role here is like predation right i'm a I, i'm a, I've been a predator as long as i've been awake yeah i think that that that's it right why why do you hunt as opposed to the just botanist? observing i it's, don't know it's a sort of deep feeling that you can't uh you know uh a playing out of your Natural role in the world. Natural role. It feels right. And um, I'm, I, I'm, I might have been at one point like hesitant to pull the trigger and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I can. I think so. But um, when things are right, hunting, and and when they're wrong, it's hard to it's hard to do it. Like it's it's a it's a strange thing. But when things are right and you get that, like you got a cow tag, you're in the public land. You know it's legal. Everything's good. You're way back. You you make that shot, it is it's right. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a wolf pulling down that animal and feeling this is a hundred percent. The world is in its orbit. Yeah. And I'm in the place. Yeah, it's an enormous value. It's an enormous uh, value, and then you eat, and yeah. you get stronger, more <laughs> powerful. Yeah. And you go and do it again, and then like and and the fate that you have delivered to that animal is the fate which awaits you. Mm -hmm. And so. I, I, there's a there's a unity of purpose here. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. I don't um, I I don't intellectually grasp it a hundred percent, but the, the the feeling of being in the current, being carried to where you need to be, is is undeniable. Mm -hmm. We talked about that a little bit earlier in terms of the muddy waters of our, you know, human world, and right. there is an enormous clarity that comes. And I think that, you know, the hunting puts you firmly in the place. And I don't know about botany and things like that, whether whether you're as present in that or whether it's a sort of venturing out and returning, which we do as hunters, you know, we, it, and it's immensely fulfilling. But uh, in you are, <laughs> it's cliche, but you're very, you know, present, present. when you're hunting. In that, and, and in a sense, it's a, like that. It's a meditation, right? Yeah. The beauty of it is, though, um, I, I think of meditation, and if you look at the the, the blue triangle or whatever people meditate on, I, I don't do that, but, um, and you sit in uh, Shazen or whatever, they put in yourself in an uncomfortable position and you meditate. Mm. Um, you had a point earlier, um, that is about your own self and awakening yourself, perhaps to larger currents, right? Mm. But what we're talking about is a little bit beyond self. Yeah. It's immersion in a, in a system that is so large, so incomprehensible, um, that you know you you can only speak of it really in religious terms. I think so. My, uh, my friend was trying to teach me it was a failure to meditate, and he said, "Listen to the things which are going on around you. Listen to." And you know, I was I was always thought, "Oh, this is a sort of new agey, self you know self fulfilling thing to do." For, you yeah. know, uh, and that's what we're doing as hunters all the time. And I think that. For me, hunting blends amazingly the 
uh, the relativity you get when you're exposed to all these things that elk is living there year round and you think about how can it make it up there on the mountain right. in this deep snow and I'm in my house and I'm warm and I'm this is where I am in relation to the elk but but it also pulls a, a clear value from that relativity and for me it's enormously fulfilling and gives me a lot of purpose in life for that reason yep and and also it awakens you to a, a deeper being like like that, and I, I like sometimes I, you're talking about that. I, sometimes I like thinking of places that I've seen, like hunting and stuff. When it's like, say, it gets forty degrees below zero here, you know, and I think, wow, I wonder what that place is like right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder what's in there, like, and and like, what's that? What's that band of mule deer does that I watch going by? Where are they now? Mm -hmm. In this awful night, you know, or it is it awful? It's not awful. It's just cold, right? But it's um, where are they? And so I have relationships yeah. built there that I would not, I, I, I don't understand meditation so much, but I don't think I would get it by sitting in meditation. Yeah. I, I wouldn't either. And I think that that's why we hunt and, you know, other people meditate. meditate right. It, it's, More power to them. Yeah. yeah. The, I think that part of that, you know, thinking about that doe in the hard winter, that winter, that night is awful for you, you right. know, when you put yourself there. but. It might not be awful for the doe, and that's a very hard thing for us to understand from our sort of human-centric right. mind. How can that possibly, you know, how can they be thriving in this? Yep. Uh, and that's an enormous relativity, which, you know, it gives you a lot of perspective on the different things existing. Well, anthropocentrism is, a, is just like if you're meditating and you're, you're playing on your phone. Mm. I, mean, I mean, to consider another Derek Jensen book is The Myth of Human Supremacy. And um, that uh, to consider people uh, as separate or or the the height of some type of development is probably to miss the point. I mean, you're you know if you you watch those grizzly bears digging those roots or moss or whatever, I mean you're just not supreme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a, I mean, I, you may be able to outwit them in some way, but a lot of times you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, it's just not supreme, and and uh. Part of part of hard hunting, real hard hunting, is to disabuse yourself of the myths of your own supremacy. Mm -hmm. When you're waist deep in snow and you yeah. hear the wolves howling around you, you get that yeah. feeling awful quick. And you're wolf. wondering if you're, you know, like if you're law, you get lost, or you 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 just you're just in it. Mm -hmm. And that there is there that disabuses you of your own supremacy because you know how you you can look at rock and then look at flesh. Mm -hmm. And you're like one, one is just not gonna. It's one is not gonna yield to the other, right? Or, or real cold. I, I mean, I grew up in Alabama, and I understand real heat, and I understand real cold from being here 33 years. But real cold will humble. Yeah, humble you. I think there's a humility that any whether whether it's the desert, the ocean, the or desert, the mountains. Another one. Uh, nature provides the humility. All you have to do is go. Yep, that's right. Yeah. The meditation is is. Is your own insignificance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a beautiful metaphor, though, because at the same time, you are, it, as, as a hunter, as a predator, it, you, you, you are significant. You're taking the life of, of something else in the, in the fabric with you. Yeah. You know what Henry Beston called the other nations of, of animals that travel through this the joy and travail of this earth. Yeah, you are significant, and your in your three score and ten, you're as significant as, as anything. And you can you can count yourself by the. I, I think that this would be unpopular with people who think of trophy hunting, but I think part of the allure of trophy hunting is that you're measuring your life by the significance of these animals you've interacted. You know, it's enormously important to take harvest this doe, and I think people feel with a mature buck or a bull or something like that. Uh, there's a weight that, you know, taking this, I, it seems like a perfectly organic way to measure your life to me. Yep. That's why people painted it on red ochre in the cave walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 